Hi, today's video we're going to discuss buying properties through a limited company structure, if it's right for you, some of the things we're doing and the reasons why we use limited companies to put our investments through uh, and some of the reasons why you might want to do it. I want to point out I'm not an accountant, you need to get your own tax advice, but I'm going to share with you some of the things we're doing and the main reasons and the main benefits why most investors are using limited company structures to buy investment property. So let's head over to the whiteboard and I'll go through some of the pros and the cons in this video. So let's discuss limited company structures and if they're right for you. Now I'm not saying run out there and set up a limited company if you're buying property. It may or it may not be the right way for you to go. So you need to get professional advice, you need to speak to an accountant. However, most investors, I would say 90% or probably a little bit higher, 90% of investors are setting up limited company structures. Certainly if you're wanting to get a bigger portfolio, it's probably the way to go because of some of the things we're going to discuss today. But do speak to your accountant. If you plan to stay under higher rate tax band, then it might not make sense to set up a limited company structure. So whilst people are out there telling everybody to set limited companies up to bypass Clause 24, Section 24, the landlord's tax changes, it might not necessarily be the right way for you to go, so make sure you speak to your account on that. Well, let's start off with some of the things you need to know about setting up a limited company. Let's say you decide to set one up. You must be aware of your responsibilities as a limited company owner here in the UK. There are some uh, things you need to be aware of, some legal requirements. So you must file a confirmation statement once a year and it costs £13 to do so, very cheap. Just a simple piece of paperwork once a year. You've also got to file a tax return once a year and this costs from £150 and upwards using an accountant. You can do it yourself. I don't advise you do this yourself, but certainly if you're setting up a company structure because there's a lot of things you need to be aware of, a lot of the tax changes and there's a lot of things you need to, to know. So it's more than justifiable paying an accountant who's got years worth of experience and knows exactly how to save you money. They'll easily save you over £150 in tax anyway. So make sure you use an accountant and they'll do all this for you. They'll file your confirmation statement. They'll also do your tax return. And then finally, common sense stuff really, you've got to act with reasonable care when you're operating your company. You don't wanna be running it at a loss for long periods of time, you know, we're aware you can do lots of things with, with your company structures and sometimes it might fall into a, a loss position for a while, but you've got to act with reasonable care at all times and you've got to try and make sure you're running it at a profit, uh, which is obviously what you want to do anyway. So let's have a chat about the pros and the cons. Now, you'll see here there's certainly a lot more benefits but there are some drawbacks to having a company structure, so let's cover those first. There are some extra costs to set it up. You've got to set the company up. Now you can set them up really, really cheap. Uh, websites such as um, your company formations, you can literally set up a company on there, an SPV for 12 pounds, 48 pence, I think it is. Really, really cheap. So it doesn't cost a lot, but there are costs that you need to be aware of. These are also tax deductible costs because they're called pre-incorporation setup costs. So even though you've not set your company up in your bank account, if you keep a hold of your invoices for setting things up, things like your company, uh, insurance, things like that, you can actually deduct them across the company uh, to year end with your tax return. So make sure you keep those to one side and you provide them to your accountant because they can go as a pre-incorporation setup cost. But well, these extra costs, they, they, are, they do add up and you've got to make sure um, you've got some money to set them up. <clears throat> um, slightly higher borrowing costs as well, so limited company borrowing with buy-to-let mortgages is typically a little bit higher than personally, but it's, uh, and that's something you've got to kind of weigh up if that's beneficial um, to you buying personally or in a company. Your legal responsibilities, obviously that's uh, something you've got to be comfortable with and make sure that you uh, are happy to commit to doing. And there's more paperwork involved. For example, when you apply for mortgages, 
They're going to ask you for lots of extra paperwork, independent legal advice. It's going to be more cost there incurred because they've got to represent you as uh, for your personal guarantee. So a quick example would be you're buying a property in your company. The lender, let's say you set a company up today, this time tomorrow a lender could lend on that company. Now most people think, well why would a lender lend? There's no assets in the company. There's, well, you've still got to personally guarantee that loan. So you'll sign what's known as a PG and you'll have to get independent legal advice on that personal guarantee. So it basically just says if that company defaults and can't pay the debt uh, for that mortgage, then you personally will have to pay the, the debt back. So it's just like getting the mortgage in your personal name anyway, you're on the hook for that debt. Now some of the PGs, believe it or not, are not for the full amount of the loan. It depends on you, depends what assets you've got in the company. As you start to get bigger, your PGs may start to reduce. We're finding out of a lot of the ones we do. Uh, the PGs aren't necessarily the same amount of the debt. So if you borrowed 80,000, it doesn't mean to say necessarily you've got to personally guarantee 80,000. It could be much less. It depends on what loan to value the property is and all that kind of stuff. But these are some of the things you need to be aware of and it incurs extra costs and more paperwork. So there's some of the negatives to having a limited company SPV structure. So the difference between the two as well, an SPV is a limited company. It's a special purpose vehicle, a holding vehicle for your assets, your properties. So you've probably heard these names mentioned, limited companies, SPVs. Well, an SPV is a limited company. It's a limited company structure that you set up to hold those properties. So let's cover some of the benefits now. Now the obvious one I put at the top is section 24. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, most people know about section 24. It means you can't offset the interest part of your mortgage against your rental income, meaning you're going to pay more tax. Now if you operate a limited company, you're actually able to sidestep that tax change and it's classed as a business and you're actually allowed to claim in a limited company you're allowed to deduct the interest part of your mortgage against your rental income. And this is why more and more investors are drawn to setting up and using an SPV structure or limited company. There's also a leg legacy benefit. So if like me, you've got children and you plan to hand your assets to your children, if you hold them personally, that can cause a lot of problems because upon death, if you don't have insurance policies to cover the debts outstanding on some of those properties, they could get taken by the lender, sold at auction, and your beneficiaries gets, gets what is left. Now that might not be a good thing uh, because there might not be anything left. And in my view, the best way would be to set up your company if you're looking to pass these to children. Again, get professional advice on this, but your legacy benefits, you could potentially put your, your wife or your partner, you put your children, your business partner, your life partner, whatever, as shareholders, people with control of the company, and it means that if anything happens to you, they can take control of that company and continue to run it, meaning you're not gonna lose out on uh, any equity and they're not gonna get taken by a lender. So there's some really good legacy benefits. Also, corporation tax is charged at 19%. It was put, um, recently, announced it was going to be going up to 25%, but 19% corporation tax. So if you're a higher rate taxpayer personally, and you're paying 40% on any income, any extra income, then it's, it's really beneficial to operate a limited company because you're only paying 19% tax. We'll cover a bit more on that in a moment as well. You've also got protection benefits. So these are all an SPV or, or limited company is a sole separate entity away from you so it, it's got asset protection benefits it's just its own standalone entity so there's significant asset protection benefits as well you're not holding them personally they're in a company away from you there's pension benefits as well to having a limited company and we'll do another video on that sometime but there's uh, really good benefits to put in um, a certain amount of money into your pension from your limited company each year. And it's a great way for you to extract capital from the company and profits without the money touching you personally, which would trigger 
high rate tax if you're a high rate tax payer. You can also draw dividends and salary from your company. Again, you'll get your accountant advice as to how much you should be taking out based on your personal, um, uh, personal situation really. Also expenses, now this is a big one and this is what I wanna cover next. So expenses, you can pay things out of your company that you certainly couldn't get the benefit for personally. So let me expand upon that. So in a limited company structure, we've, got, we've now gone electric. I didn't really want to do that with my car. I've always loved a bit of a petrol header like my car, but we've decided to go down the electric vehicle route because the accountant has said it's much better for you and you can get the company to pay for it. So we went down that route, much better, and that the electric vehicle is covered by the company. So what I've represented here is your, your income. So as a PAYE, you're, you're working for someone and you pay tax on the top line, whatever you earn, you pay tax on that whole amount. And then whatever's left, you can spend, but you pay tax on everything. Whereas here with the comp limited company structure and SPV, you can deduct your electric vehicle costs you can deduct your utilities. You know, if you work from home like I do, I've got my nice office here in the garden, we've had built, and we can get a certain percentage of our utilities um, taken off our profits. And then um, your phone bill, we've got work phones, all our staff have work phones and computers, and it's all tax deductible, comes off that top line. Uh, investor meetings, when I go down to London, the train down there, the hotel, my meals out, all comes off. Um, we've even had holidays, which are fully tax deductible because we've had meetings with, um, you know, we're over in Dubai, we had investor meetings with some of the people we work with over there, some of the investors that invest here in the UK. So we set up meetings with them, legitimate meetings, which meant they were fully tax deductible as well. And advertising costs, anything to do with the company. And then whatever's left, you, you're simply paying 19% tax on on what's left so you've got all your benefits and then you pay you know your company's paid for that out of the profits all your utilities your trips away your investor meetings your phone bills everything like that your car and then you pay tax on what's left whereas when you work for somebody you don't get that benefit you're paying tax on the top line whatever that income is you're paying tax first and then so and you're not getting any of these benefits. So this is why most people set up limited company structures. And this is a way over 90% of our investors are buying properties, but get professional advice. Um, I'm sure this video has been useful. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like the video. And I'll speak to you on the next video.